Okay, um, the House of Representatives on Wednesday began an investigation into the alleged non-remittance of contributions to the National Housing Fund. Uh, this non-remittance has resulted in the workers threatening to withdraw from the National Housing Fund. Uh, so we have our guest this morning that will be talking with us on the issue. He's uh, a former deputy president. NLC and industrial relations expert. I'm talking about Mr. Amechi Asuguni. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Give us a background to this uh, happening. Why they, um, the workers are threatening to withdraw from this <clears throat> scheme. Yes, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, I can. Uh, the you know, National Housing Fund Act was uh, actually put in place to favor workers. Mm. And this scheme has been in place for decades. And you know that when activity of this nature is uh, employed to service the interests of workers, every worker wants a shelter. Mm. Looking at the country today, you know that inflation has eaten up the salaries of employees. And therefore, people who are still paying rent, they suffer more than the others. And therefore, whereby you are making contribution as, and it's not remitted, it means that your right to assessing that fund has been restricted by the act of the employer. So that act on itself is a violation of that very act. Employers were clearly obliged, not at their discretion, to remit within a specific period, which is shouldn't be more than a week or two, having deducted such funds for workers. And therefore, employers have continued to use this money for their business, including government, especially. So whereby you fail to pay salary, for example, you have hindered workers of not just their salary, but of their chances of getting that very loan as, the, as it were. And therefore, workers are saying, why did not and not remit in the case where you have paid a salary? You did not, and you keep 2.5 of our contribution or whatever contribution some people would have improved their own to be without remitting it. For them, it's a criminal offense. And uh, it's good National Assembly is carrying out investigation. But it's obvious. Such investigation shouldn't take long because we are talking about workers' welfare. We are talking about rights of individuals. And where employers choose to do otherwise, we believe that the right of workers should be protected because it's their money. The law is not telling the employer to pay for workers. The law says workers shall contribute from their own earning. And whereby such as be dotted, not remitting it is like stealing from workers. For hmm. us, it's unacceptable. How long has this been going on? You know, it has been staggered. If you measure a period of time, you may cut off the crime before that moment. A lot of employers, you know, before now, the law was compulsory for both public and private sectors. Mm. And at a point in 2022, where they carried out uh, the law on a business facilitation act, business facilitation act of 2022, tried to open the window for private sectors not to compulsorily be involved in the scheme. In that case, private employees are put on a... They are not optional. You can either choose to uh, contribute or choose not to. That meaning that even though you are contributing, you can opt out. The law allows that, having, um, having introduced this uh, BFA, the Business Facilitation Act, which amended which the Section 45 of the Business Facilitation Act amended the Section 4 of the National Housing Fund to allow private, private sector employees to either join or not, looking at the category of the work they do. Some of the private sectors, they work for one month, they work for one year, they, are, they lost their job. And then how do you transfer this body from one employer to another? It becomes a case because they are not even feeding well. And you say you must contribute six months before you can assess the loan. And the worker who will not even work for up to six months before his contract is terminated. It means he has lost the opportunity. 
So we now allow the private sectors to determine whether to join or not. So that right is uh, actually open for private sector. But for these people that we're referring to, it has started as long, long ago when we, when we have governors that can no longer pay salaries, people who are owed salary in this country for one year, people who are owed salary in this country for 18 months, situations like that, you don't even talk about remittance of, uh, 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 of the housing, housing uh, contribution. We are not talking about non-payment of salary that should allow them to pay their pension. Not just this deduction, workers pay several deductions, including the union dues they pay to the union they affiliate to. So we believe that any money deducted from workers is actually workers' entitlement to invest it where the law says they should invest. Okay, so the benefit of contributing this money, you're talking about taking loans. What other benefits come to the, the person who contributes? And if, for instance, you lose your job or your organization stops contributing, what happens to the one you have already contributed? Uh, yes, the National Housing Fund scheme, or rather art, is very, very robust. It is robust to the extent that a worker is not assessing loan based on his own personal contribution. Your contribution gives you right to assess loan. So you may have contributed just one million, but you can assess up to 10 to 15 million. What it means then is that the contribution of the entire workforce in the country is now being brought to a pool whereby workers that are qualified, you know, the law says you must contribute up to six months. Mm. So that will give you already impression that six months contribution of the entire workforce is already in a pool for the first worker that we apply to get. Mm. Therefore, they would have contributed millions of naira, including running into hundreds of millions, allowing workers now to access such money. So every worker is entitled to assess more than you have in the account, meaning you can assess the loan and you can repay them within a lengthy period of 30 years. So such benefit for us is, is actually in favor of workers. And then when your work terminates, or in the case of retirement, or incapacitation, as the law spells it out, is for you now to apply for reform, assuming you did not even assess any loan in the first, in the first place. Whatever you have contributed would have been invested and you get both your interest and your contribution upon retirement or, as the case may be, incapacitation that uh, you need help as a matter of urgency. So all of these provisions are made clear in the law to the extent that no worker loses anything. The minimum is to get your refund, and but the benefit is to get access to that loan, meaning you are getting beyond your own money. You contribute one million, but you are giving 10 million. So you must pay back at a very little or no interest to the extent that workers at the end of the day become owners of building. In most cases, you, 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 you buy from government. That's why you see government will launch housing estate and it's open to these people to now from their contribution assess that very facility depending on the cost and the amount you are contributing. So your category will tell you the kind of category of uh, house you eventually have as a worker. Okay, but it what, means to make everybody a landlord. Yes. What's the role of the Federal Mortgage Bank right now? Uh, what are they doing about it? What's the quarrel with, with them uh, from the workers? Is it the government you're quarreling with, or is it the Federal Government Mortgage Bank that you're talking to, or who is responsible for all this? Well, I think the way it applies, because I'm talking from the consultant point of view, mm -hmm. the way it applies now is workers have right to assess their money. That is not in doubt. The major problem is the remittance, which is not the prerogative of the mortgage right. bank. Yeah. Mortgage bank is to receive. Therefore, we don't have, I don't think workers have problem. The only problem they will have with mortgage will be the processes to assess the loan, processes to get their refund, which every financial institution must put realistic and transparent method in place for workers to either assess loan or get their refund, as the case may be. But agitation that is stronger now is remit my money to where I will get my loan. 
Because if you don't remit my money, you are restricting my right and privilege from assessing it. Because for you to assess that very money, you must be a constant contributor to that fund. And therefore, withholding my contribution is as good as withholding my benefit, which eventually deter the entire essence of uh, the scheme in the first place. This is a scheme that was introduced in fan 1992. And therefore, it can, we cannot afford to suffocate it at the expense of inability of governance. Mm. But from 1992, there surely must have been some contribution that was made. Can the workers at this point access it? Uh, there's this quarrel with the federal mortgage bank, uh, banks already that uh, they are not even sending alerts to the phone numbers of the people who have been contributing. Whether they have stopped or not, I think it's still their right to know what the balance in their account is, as it were. And federal mortgage bank is not doing it. So, don't you find that worrisome? So, no, cases, cases of uh, bank lapses are also part of the challenge. But like I said, that one is already taken care of by law. Because uh, bank, you know there are procedures. And when alert is not given, even in our regular banking, sometimes you face challenge of not getting alert. Not getting alert has no effect to the amount you have. It's just an update to getting you to know the amount that you would have contributed. But every worker is looking beyond his actual contribution. Workers are looking for the purpose of contribution. You are contributing to get additional benefit. Mm. Therefore, the additional benefit is what motivates these workers to pay. I am paying like 10000 or 5000 every month to you. But the time I'm going to assess this money, I will assess them in millions. So you are going to give me money contributed in Imo State. You are going to give me money contributed from Bruno State. So we are going to assess this money beyond the borders of my own contact. So that is the most important thing. Workers should rather, for example, in our own regular bank, whereby you suffer not uh, all these alert uh, differences or gaps. You go back to the bank. You have mortgage bank of federal government in all the states. So you can apply, you can apply, you can go to the customer service to know why if everybody has their code, you must have your contributing code, your contributing number. And once you go there and then start it, they will know whether the problem is from the bank or from you that you have changed line mm. and they are still sending it to your old line and you are complaining that you are not getting it in your new line. So you need to update your, your data. So for us, some of these things can be resolvable. But the major one is give me room so that my right will not be truncated. And that is by remitting that which I am contributing. It, it, it happens on the, in the case of pension. In the case of pension, workers will pay, employers will pay. And it is what you pay that they will invest for you, waiting for the date of your retirement. In cases like that, you see that workers will pay their own because the law said deduct at source. So employers are quick to deduct, to reduce cost of their own business, running their business. But their own obligation to also contribute equivalent of that amount or higher in the case of the new law as amended, these employers will withhold their contribution, therefore making it difficult for your expectation to be their life. Because some of these workers eventually disengage from work and going into the account, you find out that the contribution of the employers is not part of your savings. And that would have deterred, that would have negated the essence of making that contribution to wait for your retirement. Because so all this money are meant to accrue interest. So when you withhold my money, you withhold my interest. The day you are paying me, are you paying me the actual or you are paying me with the current rate as the bank would have uh, initiated? These are some of the challenges. Okay. But I think the some threat, of these things, they look tiny. The threat now mm -hmm. is to withdraw from the National Housing Fund because of these unremitted funds. Uh, but uh, are there other ways to pursue this thing? For instance, a legal, uh, it's, it can also be a legal matter. Because if money has been deducted from your salary, for instance, and paid, and it's supposed to be paid somewhere and it is not paid, it could be a matter for the courts. Are you also exploring that um, opportunity as well? Yes, because government is involved. <laughs> and we all know workers are not in a hurry. 
to taking government to court because we also see court as government. And therefore, except for cases of uh, where there are no other options, even a case of law, you don't withdraw from law. The threat they are making is to tell you that if you cannot improve me, leave me as I am. Mm. That is the that is the interpretation of that threat. If you cannot help the workers to get the purpose in which this constitution was introduced in the first place, then allow them to earn their salary and pay their rent. Because you cannot say you mean well for me and at the end of the day, you deduct part of my money and it's not serving any good to me. So we believe that part of the options is what the uh, National Assembly is doing because they made the law. Mm. National Assembly can also amend the law looking at what is happening now so that even public sector will also be optional. A worker who believes he can tolerate the bureaucracy and all of these guys they are going to introduce, you can suffer it and tolerate to the end. Those workers will continue. Those workers that believe that they can plan their income and pay their rent as they go until their retirement and they have a good plan for themselves. Don't forget, you are saving 2.5 of my money to enable me access loan. The cost of the poor salary we, we have in the country. Mm. Where it's societies where salaries are equivalent to the living standard of workers. You don't even need to go that far because workers will have saved money from their income to actually buy these, buy these houses and live properly. But in this, in the fear, in the fear we have in this country, whereby salary is, you, you can imagine the 30,000 negotiated two years ago or so, has been eroded. Now, even with the current ongoing processes to put a new wage in place, inflation is already telling you that whatever you are bringing, it's almost eating up. So we are also living in fears when it comes to economic stability. And that is what is affecting some of these things. So I still believe that workers may continue to enjoy because that is the only thing they will get from government. When government are selling house to you, they will not sell it like the private sectors will do. So it's, it's cheaper and affordable for workers. And therefore, I believe the mortgage bank uh, exercise on behalf of workers is this something they can work with. Going to court, yes. I also encourage that uh, it takes court to address law. And therefore, one of the best options to address cases like this is to ask court to pronounce the right of workers as against the employers that have refused to remit. By the time court directs and also put sanctions that those withholding these deductions shall pay certain interest on the deduction as the moons, depending on the number of moons you withhold this money. It will also help the workers that even though the money is not remitted, it's already creating more revenue for you. So in one way or the other, they will find uh, a better approach without violating the law also on the side of the worker. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Amechi Asuguni, for coming on the show and giving us your thoughts and explaining more on the issue. Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay, that was Mr. Amechi Asuguni, former Deputy President, NLC, an industrial relations expert, talking to us about the worrisome issue of workers contributing money, but the money not being remitted to the appropriate quarters for housing. And that is how we are wrapping up uh, the show this morning. But remember uh, what Bill Gates said, uh, it is fine to celebrate success, but it is more important to heed the lessons of failure. Every successful person has said that if you don't learn how to fail, you may not be able to succeed. So remember these words of Bill Gates as we wrap up today. It's fine to celebrate success, but it's more important to heed the lessons of failure. Let's do it again, same time tomorrow. My name is Nyam Guru Agaji. Bye for now.